So how would you sum up the meeting yesterday? Did you find it to be productive? And I guess how optimistic are you that we actually see this money now allocated to this to this very initiative? Well, first, uh, it was a privilege to, to even be at that in, in that meeting. Uh, I think it was very productive. Uh, we, we were able to get together uh, CEOs from automotive industry, semiconductor manufacturers, uh, uh, software companies. Uh, and the important thing is, we, I think we came out of there all aligned on what needs to happen. Is $50 billion going to be enough? It's a great start. I, I, you, know, you know, for me, let's go back to what we're trying to do here. Uh, that meeting was about let's all make sure we're aligned, that semiconductor is the heart of a world economy, the heart of the U.S. economy, and we need to make sure that from this crisis of shortage, we, we take proactive steps to, to fix that issue. We all agreed on the criticality of this technology. We all agreed that this imbalance of manufacturing in the U.S., where 50 percent of the demand is, is here, but only 12 percent is manufactured, needs to be corrected. We all agreed we needed a holistic plan. Let's make sure that we, we invest in semiconductors from, from memory to analog to digital to the full gamut of the semiconductor uh, uh, portfolio. Uh, we all agreed this needed to be ambitious, that we needed to, to double that 12 percent or more over the next decade, and that the 50 billion is a great place to start. Let's think about this as a continuing journey over the next decade to improve that dynamic, shore up our national security with uh, U.S. supply chain, you know, uh, shore up our just our supply chain in general and create the economic activity that semiconductor manufacturing brings to the region. Yeah, none of which, though, is going to um, deal with the current supply shortage, is it, Tom? I mean, are things going to get worse before they get better? Obviously, the plan you're discussing is one that will take years to implement. No, I think that's an excellent point. We're doing everything we can. There's a high sense of urgency throughout this, the ecosystem and supply chain, from equipment manufacturers to manufacturers like Tom Caulfield to create capacity. We're all with a high sense of urgency to get the most out of the existing capacity we have now, accelerating investments to create new capacity. And I think you're right. I don't think this is something that is, is easily remedied in the short term because of the lead time it takes to buy equipment, install equipment, and create new capacity. But the, but the real answer here is let's be strategic. Let's learn from this crisis. Let's be better as an industry going forward. Right. Now, you can try and do both. I mean, was anything discussed at the meeting to try to deal with the short-term issues, or was it solely focused really on sort of preparing the company over the uh, country over the longer term? Look, I think everybody's doing everything we can short-term. This, this policy like this, industrial policy, is to go fix short-term stuff. It's to be strategic. And that's why getting the CHIPS bill funded is the right answer for the longer term play here to, to correct this. In the meantime, all of us in industry will do our part. We will accelerate what we need to do and, and do the best we can to, to move as fast to correct this and get a better alignment between supply and demand. So finally, Tom, I mean, Global, Global Foundries has an actual global footprint uh, with manufacturing in, in quite a number of countries and areas of the world. I'm curious how you think this will benefit your company and how it speaks to possible IPO plans. Well, first of all, the benefit for the industry, first and foremost, is to accelerate creating capacity. You know, GF, like the other five, four other semiconductor foundry companies left in the world, we have to invest every year to create more capacity to grow our business. And so we have an investment plan. Government partnership investments around the world, including the U.S., allows us to accelerate that capacity expansion. And so we, you're, you're correct. We have a great facility in Singapore, and we plan on adding capacity there. The same thing in our European Union facility in Dresden, Germany, and in the U.S. So the key here is let's use partnership investments, public-private, to accelerate adding capacity. And GF will participate in all those regions, leveraging our global footprint. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.